practice the muscles, like go to be an acting class, practice the characters that you really want to do and that, but be honest about what that range is. Today we have with us via Zoom an award-winning actress who has appeared in projects such as After She Wakes and has taken on the lead role as Sunny in the feature film Sunny in the Dark while also starring as a reoccurring character in the TV miniseries The Setup. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Hannah Ward. Hannah, how's it going? Hi, I'm going good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. We and For people who don't know, we had a bunch of production issues with Zoom and some connecting issues. Our, it wasn't either of our faults. No. We blame, but are grateful for Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're really hurting our chances of that Zoom sponsorship. Z- Z- Zoom is learning like we are. We're all learning. No, you can <laughs> They're overloaded. They're overloaded. Yeah, we just need a new update. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Russell, you want to start us off with the first question? Absolutely. I'm just going to start off with a, it's a kind of a basic question that can vary for a lot of different people. What got you interested in becoming an actress, and was there a time in particular in which you knew for sure that this was what you wanted to do for a career? Mm. Um, I think I always knew uh, when I was growing up, I was always in like neighborhood theater companies, school theater companies. I was doing like, I think my in high school, I was in, I was rotating between three different ones. Thankfully, their show schedules were all one after the other, so not at the same time. Um, but, um, I think when I first moved to LA, it just kind of, it just kind of seemed like a natural transition. And I will admit that I don't think I thought about it at all. And cause it just kind of, like I said, it just felt like, oh yeah, this is, of course, this is what I'm doing. And then when I first started, I, I, I would say I wasn't really thinking about, why I wanted to do it and what I was enjoying about it. And because I wasn't, you know, I was auditioning for student films. I was not working a lot. And um, then the more I did work, the more I've been really lucky in the projects that I've been able to do. A lot of them are independent, but the filmmakers are great. And the storylines and the characters that I've gotten to play have been incredible. And um, I think what, when it was when I did Sunny in the Dark, um, we did, after we did our festival run, we had a screening in LA and a screening in Texas. And even during the festival run, people would come up to me after the screening and, you know, wrap their arms around me and say, thank you. Um, because she was a very, uh, she was a character that was really, I, I just loved her. I fell in love with her as soon as I read the script. And it's, and I think that that's our, without knowing too much about the movie, I guess it's hard to put that in context, but, um, I think that it's our job to make people, or I see it as my job to help people reflect on things or help people feel like they've got a sense of support and that they're not alone in the, in the emotional experiences that they're having. And after I did Sunny in the Dark, it really solidified that like, that's how I want to connect to people the most. And that's how I want to, I want to give people a, a self, a sense of self-reflection um, and just to make them feel a little bit more held in this world. That, yeah. So you found a way to make it personal to you in your own kind of way, right? Yeah, I think you have to. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, there's definitely a lot of people here and I mean, I guess all over that just want to do it because they want to be on TV or they want to be famous or, or whatever. And like, would I love to be on TV consistently to be earning that steady TV paycheck? Yes, absolutely. But this is like a super unsteady um, career path. And that's, so you have to understand, I I don't know, in my opinion, I feel like you have to really love it and be maybe be doing it for like, quote unquote, real reasons. That sounds really like I really know what I'm talking about, which I don't um, in order to like, keep yourself yeah that's how i feel whenever i'm taking on a role like i have to make it real but it's not about the money it's not about the fame it's just about doing what i want to do you know exactly and then i mean it's an opportunity to really say something and you know i i think um always thinking about okay what do i really want to say with this and what do i really want to say in general exactly you're speaking not through dialogue but through performance exactly it's very poetic plus getting to like 
connect with someone like that like someone hugging you and knowing that you like affected them in such a deep way i imagine is like a, a feeling that's just so unlike anything else money or not like i've doing it for that alone would be kind of rewarding i think just when you love acting absolutely and i, I think you know we all are emotional creatures whether we want to be honest about that or not um but i think that this me like the medium of film and TV, like obviously there's a lot of jokester stuff out there. There's a lot of crap. There's all, there's a lot of just like funny feel good stuff. But I also think, I think that it is a medium regardless of that. And I love that stuff. Um, it is a medium that really has the ability to connect people to themselves and to other people. And I think that we always think that we're so alone in our emotional experiences. And I think that this medium has the ability to like break that down a little bit. If right. even for just a moment. Exactly. Awesome. So uh, if you don't mind, I want to take us back to where I actually discovered your work as an actress, and that is on the popular YouTube channel known as Film Riot. Now, you had done some work back on a short film in 2016 entitled Ghost House, which would later lead to a role in a sci-fi action short entitled Ballistic. Now, both projects were written and directed by Ryan Connolly, one of the founders of the Film Riot channel. Can you take us back to how it felt working with Ryan and what did you take away from your experience doing projects that would go on to a mountain over a million views? Um, well, Ryan's the best. Um, we have a really great working relationship and a really great friendship as well. And I love his whole family. Like his wife and I will share um, cooking and baking. Her, his wife is an incredible baker. And so we like share recipes back and forth on Instagram all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, how did I, you asked how the experience was? Right. So we first met, actually, he was casting for a different project that I booked but it, with him, but it fell through. And then um, when Sunny in the Dark did its Texas screening, I invited him and he and Josh came and we met in person for the first time, even though I had booked that other job. And then a year later, Ghost House happened. And even just from that like first meeting of them, they just have this ability to make anybody who's on their set feel like family. Mm -hmm. And they have a very tight knit crew that's just super lovely. And clearly they've all been in orbit with each other for a really long time. And they're just jokesters and they're tender and they're extremely humble. And they just kind of, they do whatever it takes to get the shot, um, which is kind of how I like to operate. Like I'm certainly a perfectionist, um, which is not a good, necessarily a good thing. Likewise. <laughs> that was satisfying. You know what I mean? Like right. that, well, it, yeah. And sometimes that's not even the take that always that's get you gets used and you're like, oh, I was off, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so the experience of working with him has always been really amazing. Like I said, like, you know, they, him, Tim and Josh, I mean, Emily, all of them really make you feel like family when you're on there. And Ryan, um, particularly with ballistic because actually with both of them, I would say, I don't think every time we work to get each time that we work together, he'll, he'll usually text me or call me after the fact and be like, is there anything that you know you think I could do better as a director and we have that and I say is there anything you think I could do better as an actor and it's like a very like that I, I don't have that experience with a lot of filmmakers right. and that's how we have why we have formed a friendship is because you know I can go to him for advice and um I guess vice versa I don't know why he wants my advice but <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm honored um, but he has this very awesome way of, I'm a very candid person and he has this really awesome way of basically being like, um, you're acting, but he does it in this very like nice way. And I, I don't mind it. Like I like to know, you know, I want, I know if something doesn't feel real to me, like I know it's probably coming off as corny and especially with action, like, you know, you're using these guns and you have to like fake the blows yeah. and you know, I mean, I was genuinely, I was, I had, uh, what did I have? I had bronchitis when we shot ballistics. So a lot of that breathing was very, very much real, but like there were some times where you know, he's like, okay, this is reading a little phony. And like he, just being able to be that candid with each other, I think 
um, without having to worry about hurt feelings is really, is really great. And he also, what's great about him too, which, you know, I, I, I talked on his podcast about how I think you have to be adaptable to whatever, however, the director and the producers and the production work, cause you are, you are one small peg in a big machine. Um, but it's really nice that he will be like, where do you, what do you feel out in this scene? Like what feels good for you? Um, and he did that in both circumstances. And so he kind of like, he's okay with any like physical instincts or, or whatever. And, and we were, it's, it's definitely, um, a collaboration. Yeah. Chemistry always creates the best performances. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. He's the man. <laughs> when you can bond with like a director like that that's when you know you guys are like you know like one thing at that point like oh yeah yeah we joke because um i call him mama because <laughs> on <laughs> i think he texted me a couple weeks ago i can't remember what about and i think he was just like checking in at about something and i i have a job Upcoming, I think in Idaho, and I was like, "Don't worry, Mama, I'm gonna be safe." Because on ballistic, he was like, "I didn't tell him that I was sick." Josh overheard me tell someone else, and he was like, "Are you sick?" And I was like, "Don't tell Ryan, <laughs> don't do it." So by the end, he found out, and he was just like, "Really?" He was also just always worried about me like being hurt, or because it was like a pretty rough and tumble shoot. And so I just started calling him mom <laughs> because he was mom. He was being like a mama bear. It's, it's hard to get that connection <laughs> with just other people sometimes, let alone directors. So that's, that's, yeah. that works out really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a nice guy. All of them, all of them are. So it's easy there. That's great. Yeah. Uh, my next question is, is there a certain process or technique you have as a performer before you step out on stage or go in front of a camera that you like to do? Um, I think, you know, when I first get a, a script or, or a project, it's about just obviously breaking down what the circumstances of that situation are. And then, um, you know, making, making the issue matter to me as much as possible. Um, and I'm a really bad liar. So I have to sort of, I, I, <laughs> so I like to say that I just, I, I need to make things really real for myself. And I love that because I know like when I'm in a moment, if I'm really, you know, feeling it and that's, that's I, like, I hate saying perfectionism because I think that that, that has like a, like, oh, it's only supposed to look one certain way. Um, and I think that a big part of the process too is remembering that it's always going to look your specific way. Like my way isn't wrong, your way isn't wrong. It's just your own interpretation and it's your own twang on things. You know, like my friends and I are often auditioning for the same roles and it's so funny to see how different our auditions turned out because we all have our own life experiences. We all, you know, have our own techniques or things that like work for us. Um, and then obviously before, you know, I start a scene, whether it's an audition or whether it's for a specific, uh, a specific scene that we're like on set or going on stage, having a really clear moment before and a lead in is very, very helpful. That's very interesting. And, and like you pointed out with the audition part of that, like you and a friend could have completely 180 different takes on a character because in because every brain every human's different so you you can look into a script and read it differently as two different actors and that's one of the great things about i think about acting in movies is that you could you could remake a movie and then it could come out completely different or two different people could make the same character completely unhinged or calm it just all depends on your delivery and how you how you like to do the delivery and stuff like that Exactly. And I think that's the hard, it's, it makes it harder and easier at the same time because, um, you know, we want to be it, we want to be chosen or whatever. And so much of the time we have to accept the fact that like us not being chosen has nothing to do with whether we're good or not. Like there's nothing that we can do to make ourselves better, you know, I mean, we can, but like, it's not, it's not because you did something wrong or bad if that makes sense. Yeah, it just yeah. depends on how they pick you and then sometimes some person gets is better for the part or not that better, it just means like 
the director has a vision and the casting director, you know, they just pick out people they feel is, fits that part. It's nothing wrong with that at all. Kind of bouncing off Russell's question a little bit here in terms of like stepping out on stage, for example, I know that you've done some work on various stage plays in the theater world outside of acting. So my question for you is how different is it working on a stage in real time in front of like a live audience uh, as opposed to working in front of a camera in which you can always retake a shot if needed? Um, Like, so does that extra added extra pressure help your performance, so to speak? Um. Yeah, I, I thrive under pressure. So I think that, um, I mean, I think it's helpful to have an understanding or to have like some experience in both. I love theater because like, if something feels really good or bad, you really just have to throw it away and move on to the next. Um, and I kind of think it's the same in front of the camera, except you just project a little bit less mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe you're just a little less you know physically right. expressive I mean I'm from New York so I'm like I talk with my hands and my my body a lot so I talk with my hands way too much to my detriment <laughs> yeah yeah I have to like I have I, sometimes I my, my friends were like can you whenever we're doing self tapes they're like can you not like stop what I don't know what you're doing don't do that I'm like well this is me <laughs> Um, yeah, but I would, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's tremendously different. I think obviously working in film and TV, things are a little bit more concentrated unless you're doing like a multi-cam, um, you know, very expressive comedy or whatever, like friends or as an example of multi-cam, um, or live audience, whatever. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, that answers it. And you get like that real time response to from the live audience as opposed to working in front of a camera and reading off the screen. I mean, you do in front of a camera as well. Like you can definitely feel when you've shifted the energy of the crew and they're like, right. oh, this right. is this is like, you know, I had an acting teacher that always said that, you know, as an actor, you have a lot of power on set. And you're also, like I said, you're one cog in the machine, but you have a lot of power to create the energy of that environment, whether you're a small part or a big part. And I've jumped on set that, like, where I've had a bigger part or I've had, you know, just a few lines. And, like, I make sure that I'm giving everything that I have and that I am being present and I'm being respectful and I'm um, being mindful of the fact that these people have been working like crazy around the clock longer than I have while I've just been sitting and waiting. Um, and then, you know, when it, when it's time to show up, I really, you know, there's, whether you're on stage or whether you're in front of a crew, there's like, there's this momentum of building up to presenting yourself or presenting this person that you've in this world that you've created, um, to the other people. And it's like, the crew is a stage. But it's a good feeling when, like, you know, if you have, like, a crazy scene or something and the crew is like, whoa. Yeah, that, yeah. well, that's my problem when I do my roles because a lot of times I kind of do a lot of, like, horror stuff. So I'm obviously I'm playing, like, the psycho role a lot to the point where Russell kind of has to snap me out of it. He's like, you good? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just in character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're scaring just, me hey, a little psycho- bit. <laughs> This just reminded me of a behind the scenes story I remember hearing about on, on randomly. This is on Thor, that first Thor movie. And then Anthony Hopkins, when he would do his scene, the crew would be crying after because he would get into the character and he's playing such a, you know, amazing character in that movie that he would that when they'd you know, cut uh the crew would be in tears and it would just be like that's this that's the Broadway stage of of cameras right there. Like like Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's like you're not just you're doing it for everyone, you know, like yeah that's a, oh, i love him he's i could incredible. i could have i could do a whole podcast just talking about anthony hopkins yeah, but i'll like <laughs> oh, okay. yeah but I'll, I'll move on to my next question <laughs> i was just wondering do you have a favorite onset experience in particular that kind of stands out to you <sighs> um <laughs> <laughs> so that might have been a really yeah, big I mean, question I, actually. I, like I said I've really been lucky to do some really to be able to uh, embody some really awesome characters um, God 
I mean, so this last project that I worked on, I worked on this project called Shackled in New York. Um, I think they still have a little filming to do that got cut short because of COVID. Um, but it's a very high stakes, very sophisticated thrill. I mean, the writing is just, is just really amazing. Um, and I had this moment where, so I play uh, this woman named Candy King, and she is a drug addict um, hooker. And I like, it, it's the unexpected moments that are my favorite. And I, and I don't want to give away too much, but there's this moment where um, mm, there's a little bit of violence, there's a little bit of a stunt. And then I just like did something really, I have like blood coming out of my nose and I just like, I had and these huge heels on, which like I am <laughs> not graceful. And Oh God, I can't even, I don't think I can say it. I don't think I'm allowed. I probably it's can't okay. say it, but okay. it was a really it's cool, okay. unexpected, like nasty moment that came out of it. And it was just like me interacting. It was just, I was just like interacting with this door <laughs> to say, I what I was like, Sam. And it was just like disgusting and awesome. And as I walked up, everybody was like, ew. It was, an, it was something that only happened in the moment. I know. I, I wish like that makes no sense, but no, no, that this was no, no, no. This this makes me want to check it out more. I'm more intrigued now just from having the vague details. <laughs> yeah, you just sold me. <laughs> she was gross, and it was. And I think it's the moments of like surprising yourself, even you know. Like I remember in Ballistic, there was a moment where I'm like about to die, and I started laughing, and I was like, "What?" And I, I think only a part of it made it into the cut, but that was re- like moments like I mean, all of Ballistic was really exciting because I had never done anything like that um and sunny in the dark i remember there's one experience so in one of the final scenes i you know for those who haven't seen it i don't i don't want to reveal too much but the way that the scene was written myself and my co-star jay hugley who's been in like everything you could imagine um we kind of both read the scene as like it being for him and it ended up being i don't talk I don't talk through most of the movie. Um, I'm a homeless girl living in his attic. And uh, so there's, there's this one scene and he doesn't, he doesn't he, he talks the whole time and I don't. And I was just like so affected by him and also just by this world that we, that we, the production that he, that he had created, we were just so dropped in and the scene took a totally different direction that we just didn't expect at all um and it was really i mean not that you plan anything out but it was just very very different from what we had envisioned um and it just was really i yeah short version of the answer yeah. unexpected moments <laughs> so, it's like improv lines and like some of the greatest one-liners in movie history weren't written down they were just like here's Johnny that wasn't written down yeah. in the shining that just happened. He just did it. And they're like, uh, exactly. just... speaking of Anthony Hopkins, that whole, um, I had his grains with the glass of Chianti and the fava beans or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was totally, improv. that was totally improv. It's I'm just like, when you get in, when you're in the, when you're just that synced into character, you can just, you are that character at that point. I believe you are that character in that moment. I want to say then, so much, but I can't. I like, that's, I that's, <laughs> it's okay. We'll check. We don't want to get you in trouble. So that's. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, ones that are already released, but I, I don't want to give spoilers if people are interested in, in watching, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. That makes, that makes, that makes that sense. Makes sense. There's definitely something in every project I've done where it's been like a really amazing moment. But again, like with projects, there are projects where like the whole thing was just like a wild ride that was so great. It's it's, basically, it's like the unexpected moments are usually some of the greatest moments. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So um, if you were to give any specific and particular kind of advice to an actor, actress looking to get their foot in the door, what would it be for you? 
Um, well, I don't know what gives me authority to give advice on such things, but, um... Every actor and actress has a different story, so anything works. No wrong answers here. (laughs) Um, I would say on a technical standpoint, know your casting. Um, like we all have an idea of what we're capable of for sure, but like really know what you're capable of, really know your range. And, you know, the more you work, the more you'll have the um, opportunity to stretch yourself, yourself, yourself and show people, you know, what you're interested in doing. But like in the beginning, you know, like I look like a very, generic you know brunette brown eyes like (laughs) girl next door whatever that means um and I hated that for a really long time but there's a lot of there's bread and butter in that for sure and then like I said you know you kind of you meet more people and you network and you're able to stretch yourself and find projects and people start to learn more about you um like the movie that I did in New York Graham Powell was one of the co-writers on that. He was in Ghost House and Ballistic. Um, and we met because of Brian and I got that job because he wanted me to audition for this other role that was like the mom, you know, good girl in it. And I was like, I will read for that, but can I also read for this? And he was like, uh, I guess. And, and then, <laughs> then he called me after I sent him my audition. He was like, yes. So, which was great. Um, and I was really nervous auditioning for the other one because I had never done anything like that. But I was like, I can't do this. Um, but so yeah, I'm. I'm. Mm, yes, there's not. A, that's not succinct at all. But I hope it makes sense. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, technically trust your casting and try and like get some work off of that, and then that that will lead you into and. Is still practice the muscles, like go to be an acting class, practice the characters that you really want to do and that, but be honest about what that range is. Um, and then also, I guess on a personal level is um, have something else that you're doing as well, not a backup, but you know, there is a lot of sitting around and waiting. Um, I'm a freelance writer. I write blog content. I write for um, online publications um have something else that can that can uh (laughs) authorize uh sorry my agent just emailed me i saw her thing what was i saying oh you're a blog writer for freelance work yep Uh, so i just have something else that can occupy your time whether that's another job or another hobby um anything like just have something else that can that can keep your mind and your heart busy so that you're not just like okay I'm waiting on that job like you have to feel full as an individual in order to be able to to make it through the waiting and stuff like that I'll be honest like I have a meltdown once every two three months which is good it's better than like two three weeks like I was like when I first started yeah that's where I'm at right now it's progress you'll get better (laughs) and I'm sure eventually you'll have a meltdown once once every six months, you know, like that's, we can only aspire to less meltdowns. Ma- ma- managing the meltdowns. Yeah. <laughs> have something else, something else that can, you know, like it, it's okay to have other interests because like I said, it isn't just about you being a good actor. It's also just about like whether you're right for a part, whether you're the right look, sometimes you're too tall, sometimes you're too young sometimes you just you know you're a little you've got a little darkness to you and they want someone like who's like super puppy and you know there's just so many so many things that have nothing to do with you and you just do whatever you need to do to make you feel good on your own without the success or without booking that job and it's very hard like I said one two to three months meltdown it's over <laughs> You can ask my mom. <laughs> you can ask mine too. <laughs> no, then. Yeah. That's perfect advice. Honestly, that's that's helpful. Oh, okay. good. Because that's, that's that's something I wouldn't even thought about. Like aspiring actor myself, I I didn't think about like, well, what happens when I wait? I wouldn't have even thought of that. So that's that's really great that's advice, great. actually. 
You can work out with me. I'll work out. I'll get a with me. Because you never have but done if it yet. But if I get the role because I'm not because I'm and not. I work out and when I wait, then I could not get the part. Like now. There's also a need for that. <laughs> there is. Yeah, I, I could be the muscular guy's not fit best friend <laughs> that has a couple of lines. I mean, that's a start. That's the beginning of a career right there. Exactly. And that and I think that that's what's cha- I think that's what's changing a little bit in the industry as well is like I think initially, I mean for a long time it was like, you know, the leading man and the leading woman and the man's going off to war and he's so strong and he's handsome and the woman is like, "Oh my god, he's safe." And now, you know, there's I mean even with shows like like right now I'm watching The Sopranos for the first time all the way through. Um, and it's so interesting because you don't, I think it was not ahead of its, I mean, it was ahead of its time. The characters are so dynamic because you love them, you're rooting for them, but they're horrible people. And I think now you're seeing that a lot where characters are, it's the same. They're lovable, but they're also hateable. And it's not the typical, like, leading man and leading woman. Like, that's kind of, it's a little, it's it's almost boring, you know, like, Mm -hmm. It, it is the characters that you least expect. Like, that's what I, that's what I aspire to, to do. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, I want to be a working actress that is like constantly in those characters that are the ones that you kind of like, don't really look at initially. And then you're like, wait, what? Right. You crazy. You know, something. <laughs> yeah. Or like, wow. Or like, wow, she's a badass, you know, or the unexpected, the unexpected hero, which I think is definitely what's, shifting now like it's a lot less um rigid and traditional which is really cool to see plus the whole supporting actor and category has just gotten so much better in recent years because nowadays the supporting cast can be more interesting than the main lead of like a tv show or a movie there's a lot of actors that are were leading men or women and then they're supporting actresses later in their career and they actually get better roles being supporting you know you know it's just all about the yeah and i mean the character so in the project i know i keep saying this project but in the uh project shackle that graham powell co-wrote um the role that he initially asked me to audition for was the more leading lady of it whereas the one that i wanted and would have been like way more shooting days and the one that i wanted was i was shot out in four days but it was so juicy mm-hmm. and the scene mm-hmm. was so crucial. And I was like, mm, if I can get this, this is really what I want <laughs> to do. Exactly. Um, exactly. And then to go back to the advice, you know, like Graham and I had built a relationship. So, you know, I went into Ghost House doing a very traditional um, role that was still really fun. Loved that project. Um, and but you know like you build your relationships with people and you say okay well I, would you also be open to you know that's how you i mean at least that's how i stretched right yeah that's yeah. how i was perceived yeah gotcha well i'll answer oh i'll ask my next question out of all the projects you've done so far what would you consider to be one of the hardest roles you had to take on Oh, um, it's really hard. Um, just because she is very different from, she's always the character that I envisioned myself playing. Um, her and Sunny, I guess, from Sunny in the Dark, but Candy was kind of what I've been feeling myself over the last few years grow into. And, you know, I was coked out, or she was supposed to be coked out for a bunch of it, and I was in very little clothing, and, you know, just very vulnerable and messy in a, in a much um, more drastic way than I was used to. And, uh, the guy who like hired me for the week as his pretty woman, if you will, um, was lovely and made me see his name's Armin Garo. He was in the Sopranos, uh, which is why I started watching. I want to see, I want to see what happens to him. Um, I'm, I haven't reached his part yet, but I'm very excited. Um, but, uh, yeah, like having to interact like sexually and also in this like be like gross way, but also keep it 
keeping it grounded and real was something that made me really it's something that I always think about like I want this to feel authentic and not just like <laughs> I'm on drugs and I'm drag you know <laughs> right. um, a little method acting the high heel <laughs> um, right so that was I, I think that was definitely that was a very that was the first new ex really new kind of um paradigm that I I've taken on in, in a while and it was really I was I'm really glad and honored that that they let me do it so that's a great I mean it's like you said the dark sometimes the darkest characters are I guess like I don't the funnest to play sometimes like for me because I like villains bad guys I always want to try to do those roles because those are just like you just can go you can either go over the top you can go really serious you can make it any kind of yeah, and I mean, it, I think it was hard too because if I would watch, you know, if they would watch the clip back, I I would I usually don't like to watch that, but I would watch it because I wanted to make sure that like sometimes I would watch it because I wanted to make sure that it like read real instead of being performy, um, and that was even you know when I was doing this the audition for it, it was a self tape. Um, and again, just like having to be like coked out and like antsy or whatever, it's, it's, you know, you watch it back and it's hard to see yourself like that and be able to be um, objectively critical about it and be like, okay, this feels real because it's like, I, you know, obviously I know how I, I'm, I'm not coked out on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's hard to see myself as that and be like, oh, that's not put on. So it was hard for me to to make that judgment call a lot. It's like it's like you know it's not real, but you got to be like, well, is it real? If it was real, if that makes like it's sort of like yeah. it's weird to weird to word it, but yeah, yeah. And I mean, like there was something like I had obviously done all this work before I got there, a lot of homework. But then you know when I got to my fitting, like the clothes were so like they had this huge spread, and they were like, okay, let's create her. And it's like that was a helpful element and then you know getting into the set environment and then having you know the interaction with armin who plays um max who's my my uh my uh sugar daddy um <laughs> you know like all of that obviously enhances it and like helps you know it's like you, you try at least for me i try and get to like 90 95 percent there um and then, you know, all that other stuff fills in the gaps and really like ignites something else. Wow, exactly. And I guess if it's going to be such a different, like if to do a role one day where you're supposed to be not real, like let's say like a role where you're supposed to be over the top that then you kind of like, I guess you, for me, I would overthink it. I'm like, am I too over the top? Do I want to be more over the, like how over the top do you want it? Cause that's a whole separate, that's the other end of the spectrum. Like now you have to not be real, but then it's like, what do I, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> well, the face series that I did was definitely like that. It was a comedy and I was like a pregnant college volleyball player on a really crappy team. And like, it was very over the top comedy, but I thought the script was really funny. Um, and it was ridiculous, but I was like, I mean, I guess comedy is different though. Cause you can just be like, whatever. I'm Here just going to, you know, Here I am. exactly. All right. Well, we wanted to make sure we didn't take up too much of your time today. So to wrap up our talk, did you have any upcoming projects you would like to have the floor with and just promote? Anything you want to talk about? Um, well, Shackled is coming out. That's the project that I keep talking about that right, right. happened in February in New York. Um, I can't say too much about what it is about. Uh, he actually told, I texted him today and I was like, what am I allowed to say? And he <laughs> said, I read it. <laughs> um, so he, co so Grand Powell re co-wrote that with Matt Bayer. The director is Luke Spears. Um, it, one of the most like visceral scripts I've ever read in my life. I mean, I don't know. I didn't know that Graham could write and um, it's amazing. Um, and it's a sci-fi crime thriller. Um, it was, like I said, the characters were so well-rounded and it, it was so much fun to work on. Um, what am I allowed to say? It's a dark sci-fi take on the criminal justice system. And it's kind of like a, it's got like a Blade Runner kind of vibe to it. It's really cool. Um, I am uh, shooting a project in Idaho, allegedly in July, if, if that um, 
works out with the current pandemic. Yeah. Um, and I have uh, After She Wakes, which is a feature about narcolepsy. Um, it's like a sci-fi horror thriller. Um, I have The Ascent and uh, Sunny in the Dark out on all streaming platforms except for Netflix. But I think After She Wakes will eventually, hopefully, be on Netflix. And then I also have uh, The Setup, which is available on uh, Facebook, Facebook Watch. Awesome. Looking forward to checking every one of those out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're thanking you for taking the time to, to do this podcast with us. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for um, giving me something to do today. <laughs> yeah, sorry about all the connection errors. I didn't know what was going on there. <laughs> Damn you, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's that's all we had to ask today. Hey guys, well, it was lovely meeting you, and um, let me know if you need anything else from me. All right, thank you all so right, much. Thank you so much. It no was, it was amazing, amazing meeting you, and lovely. thanks thanks for, for the advice for me personally. The advice part, I'll, I'm taking Likewise. that to heart for sure. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> you know, again, I don't know what gives me authority, but you can always if you have if you're having a meltdown, it's okay. You're, you're, you've already <laughs> helped me more than than you'll know. So, so thank you. <laughs>